So now with week four in the books for the Packers, I want to go through a few different sites and take a look at where they currently have the Packers ranked in their power rankings. I took a look at it, I think last week or the week before as well. And so I'm just curious to see what the general consensus is about this Packers team right now sitting at three and one. So first off, starting here with NFL.com, um, let's see who is number one, probably the Eagles. Yep, the only undefeated team left in the NFL. The Eagles have looked really good. Um, I love Jalen Hurts. He's on my fantasy team. Picked him as like the sixth QB, so um, I'm feeling good there. The Bills currently sitting at number two. Um, the Bills are obviously, of course, always an electric team. We got the Chiefs at number three at three and one, and we got the Packers at number four. So um, let's see what they have to say about the Packers. When it was over, Fox cameras captured Packers coach Matt LaFleur removing his headset with a look of epic relief etched across his face. That was a that was a great little clip there if you guys haven't seen that. I feel like Matt LaFleur felt like all of us felt in that moment, just getting the win, being like, oh, goodness gracious, thank you, we did it. <clears throat> they say, a home affair against a lesser Patriots team playing its third-string rookie quarterback should not have stretched to overtime, but Green Bay is a team fighting itself while still in possession of enough muscle memory to win in the process. This way of winning I don't think is sustainable because it puts too much pressure on our defense, Aaron Rodgers said. And obviously, I've got to play better and will play better. Rodgers is far from the problem. In fact, the reigning MVP made several brilliant throws Sunday. He just needs more help from his collection of mostly unproven receivers. So as I said, I do think this Packers receiver room is on the upwards trajectory. I think that Romeo Dobbs is becoming more and more efficient in the passing game. Rodgers is trusting him more and more. Lazard had his first game over 100 yards. Cobb is coming up in big third down situations. So I like how this offense is looking. We are, I think I saw a stat like the second most, have the second most explosive plays in the NFL right now, mostly due to Aaron Jones and his, I think he has 13 runs of over 10 yards. So when Jones has a ball in his hands, he has just been incredible this year. I mean, a beast. So then we have the 49ers at fifth with him beating the Rams. Yesterday, the Bengals at 6, Ravens at 7. So that is from NFL.com. Now let's move to ESPN. Let's see if they have a similar idea here. So they have the Chiefs, number one, instead of the Eagles, um, which is interesting. I mean, Patrick Mahomes is Patrick Mahomes. We got the Bills, number two. We got the Eagles, number three. And then we have ESPN putting the Packers at four as well. So um, week four ranking was seventh. So they moved up three spots. Defensive efficiency, 13th. Like that's not too that's not too bad. Um, the biggest issue on defense is getting gouged on the ground again. Yes, we need to improve our run defense. That is for sure. Especially coming in this week, we're facing the Giants with uh, Saquon Barkley. So that should be a another big test for this Packers run D. Hopefully, we look a lot better lot this week than we did the previous week. Not only are the Packers allowing nearly five yards per rush, but they're having trouble bringing runners down. There are only three teams allowing more rushing yards after contact than the Packers. This was an issue last year, and it continues to be one this season. Yeah, I think that when we look at this Packers defense, they're definitely high hopes, and I think that they've shown us in, in lots of big situations. We've been really good on third down and big crucial moments. This Packers defense has come, clutch, come up clutch, especially in overtime this past week when we needed to hold Bailey Zappi and that rushing attack of the Patriots. We were able to hold them to you know not get into first down, which allowed the Packers to get the ball back and score touchdowns, or get a field goal, not a touchdown. So I do think this Packers defense has looked really good in, in certain situations, but the run D last week looked really bad. Um, I think Devondre Campbell and Quay Walker need to play better against the run. The D line, interior D line needs to play better against the run. So it will be a big test this next week in London against the Giants. Then to finish it off here, we have the Athletics. So they have the Eagles, number one. Um, and then here we have the Bills, number two. The Chiefs, number three. Let's see, Packers, four again. Huh, huh. Nope, we got the Ravens ahead of the, the uh, Packers here, number four for the Athletic. Dolphins, five, okay. Bengals, six, okay. Not in the top six, maybe seventh. Nope. Buccaneers better than the Packers. We did beat the Buccaneers, but they were without their top three receivers, so maybe that's what, what they're thinking there. Um, I still put the Packers ahead of the Bucs. We did just beat them recently. Um, Packers, eighth, okay. So, eighth, three and one. The Athletic gives us the worst ranking of these three. Um, they say what they are, unimpressive. All right. With a three-game stretch coming up against the Giants, Jets, and Commanders, the Packers won't have a chance to prove they're serious contenders until a Week 8 trip to Buffalo. That's going to be a great game. It's probably the perfect time to send Aaron Rodgers, Christian Watson, Romeo Dobbs, and Alan Lazard to Joshua Tree so they can connect on a higher level for a few weeks while Jordan Love hands the ball off to Aaron Jones and A.J. Dillon for some easy victories. I guess you're, uh, I guess they're wanting to give Jordan Love some more playing time. 
I don't think that'll be happening most likely. One of the problems with Green Bay is it signaled an offseason shift to become a defense and run first team, and the Packers haven't really been great at either. They're allowing a league high 71.7 completion percentage while blitzing at the second highest rate in the league. Um, they're also only 12th in rushing success rate per true media. So we already talked about this. The Packers run D needs to improve. And the defense overall, I think, hasn't been quite as good as we thought they would be. Um, and they definitely need to get things going. We are without, you know, Jair last week, as well as Adrian Amos going down with a concussion. Rudy Ford did play well, I think, in Adrian Amos' absence. But there are definitely some spots in this defense where we need to improve. The thing I already discussed in this video that I think is, pot, you know, a positive is in big situations, this Packers defense has come through when we really needed them to. Week two against the Bears, we hold them on, what was it, fourth down, I'm pretty sure it was, to keep the game 24-10. to 10. Uh, Week three against the Buccaneers, of course, we allowed them to score a touchdown, but this, the two-point conversion, we come up clutch, Devondre Campbell tips the ball, and then last week, as I already mentioned, in overtime, holding them um, to not getting that first down, giving the Packers the ball back. So there are definitely some things to clean up. Hopefully, these next few weeks, we see this Packers defense improve on the interior D line and the you know linebacker group, which is when it comes to overall this team stopping the run. So overall, you know people still see the Packers as one of the top ten teams in the NFL. I would happen to agree um, with that assumption. Still sitting at three and one, tied with the Vikings at the top of the NFC North. I guess the Vikings have a game ahead of us because they beat us. But um, I think the Packers, you know, in week four, I like what I've been seeing. This offense is taking some steps forward. We need some. We need to improve on the defense side of the, the defensive side of the ball. Um, but yeah, feel free to comment your thoughts in this comment section down below. Subscribe if you want to see more Packers content. And I'll see you guys next time.